Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation. I am Christian Abbe, a PhD student at EPFL Switzerland. And today I would like to introduce to you our model, which is called Self Rule to Adapt, SRA for short, which is learning generalized features from sparsely labeled data using unsupervised domain adaptation. Before starting the actual presentation and description of the model, I just would like to introduce the whole team. I, even if I'm presenting alone today, at least for this video, the, all this work is the result of the cooperation of people from different institutes. So here they are, and I just would like, just would like to thank them again. Now about the motivation of our work. I guess some of you are working with uh, in the medical domain, uh, most of you, <laughs> and. Uh, as you all know, it is actually time expensive to get annotation for data. And if you don't have annotation for those data and you're working with standard sup supervised learning, you cannot use them and they should be discarded, which is kind of a shame because usually you have thousands of them. This is why we basically choose to go in the direction of supervised learning when you can use those unlabeled data to start to learn morphological information and build um, good embeddings. Also, as it is mentioned, as it is unsupervised, you don't need annotation. Therefore, you're saving all the annotation time with your pathologist, for example, and you can take advantage of all the data you have. Then you can add on top. So this is self-supervised part is just a representation of data. And then you can use unsupervised or supervised domain adaptation to actually benefit from data uh, that are already labeled online to uh, predict the classes of your tissue. So in other words, what does it mean? So this is the case we are working with. So the top row is what we call the source domain. It is a cohort that we'll find online with different type of tissue that are usually labeled. And on the bottom row, you have what we call the in-house target data set, which is the data you have in your institute that are unlabeled and where you actually want to know uh, the classes. As you can see here, you do not necessarily have one-to-one -one correspondence between the classes. It can happen that the cohort that you're selecting online is just describing a subset of your data. So you have to be careful with this. And then the whole goal of this project is find a way to actually align the distribution of the two data sets such that you can use the top row to predict the bottom one. I will try to follow as much as possible the guideline for middle uh, 2021, which is avoid using math and just explain to you the general idea of um, of this project and uh, of uh, this model. So let me try. So the first question you can ask yourself is when you're doing self-supervised learning is what kind of constraint can we impose in the feature space? So the most common one, as you might know, is constructive uh, learning, which is what most people use, for example, for MoCo, CNCLR and other uh, approaches. But here we will use kind of a two-step approach. The first uh, model, the first, uh, sorry, loss, will actually optimize what we call the in-domain, which is a consistency of the interest set. And then we will optimize another loss simultaneously, which is the consistency between the sets, what we call cross-domain one. So what does it look like? So the first constraint, as I explained, is the inner domain which is basically kind of following the rule of what we know of CNCLR, for example, or MOCO, where you have an image and two of augmentation of it, this image, as you can see here. And you're basically trying to gather them together using contrastive loss with respect to the rest of the cohort, which is usually embedded in the queue, for example, if you take MOCO. And it is standard, like you can call this the negatives. And you do that for the source and the target individually. So right now you have no uh, interaction between those two you just have op you just are optimizing the distribution of the source and the distribution of the target so there are individual then as a second step you can say is there a way to actually align those two distribution that that i just optimized so here to do this we will use entropy so imagine you have a sample from your source domain which is an image which is the same as the previous one from normal tissue in colorectal cancer and then you will look at the target images and try to find good candidates that are uh, similar. To do this, actually use uh, cosine distance in the feature space. And the one that you can see here in uh, green are the ones that have high similarity and the red one have low similarity. 
if you look at the distribution of the similarities uh, across the whole data sets or, or the whole queue, you will see you have mostly low value and some, some of them will be high and if you compute the entropy of this distribution will be actually close to zero because it is well defined. So this is exactly what you want and what should be described as a good example with uh, easy um, key and queries. But what happened now, if you have a sample from the source or the target, where you actually are not able to find a good candidate in the target domain. So if you look again at the distribution of the similarities and if you compute as a, again, as I said, the distance in the embedding space, what you will end up with is actually a distribution of uh, similar distribution for across all similarities and it will be almost flat. So if you compute the entropy of this, it will be actually pretty high. So here we're making the assumption, the, uh, the following assumption is that if you start by grouping together examples that have low entropy, hoping they will be actually similar, the model will start learning useful representation. So you go in this easy to hard learning approach where you first gather easy examples. And as the training goes on, you include more and more complex examples. This is what the architect architecture theory looks like. So it is uh, really similar to the MoCo architecture where you also have the queue, which is here in this case embedding both source and target domain. And you have the two additional laws that are applied to the feature space. So what is the output of all of this? Is it working? So if you look at the visualization of the, and the alignment of the um, and classification of the data sets, this is what it looks like. Here you can see in red, uh, the cadre 19. So this is actually the label set uh, from online where we know the labels and the in-house data, which is the data that we have in our institute. Um, just to mention, as you can see during the whole learning process, uh, there is no label involved. So everything is unsupervised. This is what we call unsupervised domain adaptation. The labels come when you actually finish to train the model and you train on top the linear classifier with just a few examples. And here is what you will get if you do that. Uh, you have the labels of this cat 19 that are spread around. And as you can observe as well, if you look at the embedding, you have some of the points of the in-house data set that are not aligned with the one of cat 19. And this is actually pretty fine because you don't want to be necessarily able to find good candidates because as I explained uh, before, the labels just represent a sub a subset of your data and you do not necessarily have labels for all of them. Another example that is uh, pretty much interesting for me is um, the representation of the data mismatch. So what happened if you actually have, as I explained before, one example here, it is actually a tissue tab of stroma uh, that you can find in a, in a data set where in the target one, you don't have any similar tissue. So if you don't use this easy to hard approach and, to tr and you try at any cost to actually try to optimize entropy, the model will just follow and try to optimize the loss without, uh, without really thinking it, which is just a mathematical model. So what you will end up with is just like almost all the samples where you have kind of low similarity and few samples that were optimized just for the purpose of the loss, even if they are not really similar. And if you do that with the easy to hard approach, and you don't force to have all samples that find good queries in the target or source domain, depending on where you, you start, what you will end up with is almost the same configuration, but as you can observe, the probabilities is much lower. And if you look at the distribution of the similarities, you can kind of see um, uh, a consistency in the distribution and it is not, uh, you don't have outliers basically. What uh, we can observe as well, if you look at the example of tumor detection, for example, for whole slide images, is that if you take the standard supervised models, it will actually be difficult for the model to um, deal with examples where the, uh, the example you're showing is, that is not actually the example he has seen in the class, it has seen in the class. So here, if you have actually a mixture of tissue, the model will fail to detect. So here you can see you have example of tumors laying in complex trauma. 
and is actually a mixture of both tumor and complex stroma and also lymphocytes, uh, you have muscle, you have stroma, so it's really complex environment. But if you train SRA to actually match distribution of data that are actually good representation of your data, so a mixture of tissue and label data, is already able to capture this information and therefore when you apply this on hold slide images is way more confident uh, in the classification. So you can see he is almost uh, taking into account all the cancer region lying in the complex trauma. You can do the same with uh, multi-class detection. This is this uh, result come from the paper so if you have uh, if you want to look a bit into it you can actually just take a look at the paper itself and ask question afterward. And that was pretty much it. Uh, I keep in the time, it's almost 11 minutes. So thank you all for your attention and greetings, greetings from Switzerland and have a nice conference. Thank you all.